Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Last week we noted that it seems a little strange, a little odd, that former CIA Director John Brennan still has a high-level security clearance. He doesn't work for the government anymore. He's a cable news yapper who spends a lot of his life yelling at people on Twitter. Brennan is also a political extremist who, if you listen carefully, seems unbalanced. If John Brennan gets a security clearance, then why not the homeless guy talking to himself on the bus? That seemed like a fair question. Apparently, the White House agreed with that. Yesterday, the administration announced it is seeking to revoke security clearances for John Brennan, Jim Clapper, and other former officials who no longer work for the government. Because, honestly, why would they have security clearances? In a normal year, that would not be a very big story, but things are not normal right now. So here's how the geniuses on cable news reacted. Watch. This is an abuse of executive power. This is... This is Erdogan's Turkey. That is exactly what you see in authoritarian regimes. It's childish. It's petty. This is so extraordinary. The last thing you want in intelligence is partisanship. That he would turn against them in a way that obviously disrespects uh, uh, civil liberties, disrespects free press, uh, is an autocratic kind of move. It's the kind of thing you'd see in a banana republic. Autocratic. First they came for John Brennan's security clearance, and I said nothing, barf. Next time you hear some blowhard on television warning about creeping authoritarianism, ask yourself, am I for unfettered free speech? Of course you are. You're an American. That is your birthright and the foundation of all other liberties. Then ask yourself a second question. How about the guy on television lecturing us about authoritarianism? Is he for unfettered free speech? No chance. He considers your opinions hate speech, which is a made-up category designed to gut the First Amendment and shut you up. He'd happily support big tech firms and college administrators and your company's HR department as they punish you for saying what you think is true. Creeping authoritarianism? It's already here, and that guy is the face of it. Lou Dobbs, by contrast, hopes, hosts Lou Dobbs tonight on Fox Business, and he joins us tonight. Lou, what do you make of this controversy. I can't remember a weirder one. I was not aware that John Brennan had a moral right to a security clearance in perpetuity. Yeah, Were you? His, his uh, ascendancy to uh, the moral high ground uh, caught me by surprise, too. This is the man who, who CIA spied on the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, who lied about spying on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, it, it is extraordinary that this, this man has challenged, uh, insulted, uh, and uh, degraded the uh, the presidency throughout uh, the past year, and now he would object to having his security clearance lifted. Tucker, I can't imagine why any one of those people retained a security clearance. They are of absolutely no use uh, to any of them unless they're monetizing it. Has been as Senator Rand Paul has said. Uh, and I thought, uh, frankly, the, your discussion with Rand Paul uh, hit exactly the right note uh, in, in questioning the, the existence of security clearance for former officials, period, for any reason. Well, I mean, he's a cable news yapper. He's a consultant to yep. cable news, and so is Jim Clapper. And they have the highest level security clearances. And it raises the question, then, like, why don't I have one? Or why don't you have one? I, I mean, what could possibly be the justification for that? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm holding out for subpoena power. I would much prefer <laughs> subpoena power. You get the clearance, we'll, we'll have lunch That's and so go good. from there. Uh, I, I, think I, this, I, I think this is just an absurdity that it exists at all. Uh, think about Clapper and, and uh, the quality of people that were in the Obama intelligence leading the intelligence community under President Obama. Uh, Clapper, uh, you know, I, I will leave Michael Rogers, uh, the head of uh, the NSA, out of this. He is a sterling quality uh, individual. But Clapper and Brennan and Comey, are you kidding me? Why in the world would they have security clearances? And then you see these former liberals in good standing defending this, and it makes you realize that whatever Trump is for, they're against and vice versa. So it's very easy to bait them. All of a sudden, they're for MS-13, and they're right. for, you know, acting in porn movies as a noble profession, and they're for demented former CIA directors having security clearances. I mean, how easy would it be to get them to take totally insane positions just by telling them that Trump is against it? Well, I, I don't think it would be difficult, as you point out, at all. Uh, think about the positions that Clapper has taken, uh, the lies that he has told. 
uh, Comey, who's misrepresented at the very least uh, so much. Uh, you know, he talked about President uh, Trump as a man who uh, uh, is nefarious, but this is the man he was perfectly willing to serve uh, as his uh, FBI director. Uh, and, the, and the list goes on. The madness and the intrigue here is overwhelming, I suspect, to most Americans. Because first, they didn't know that they, these people had security clearances still. Uh, they didn't understand why they got them in the first place and ascended to the top of their agencies. Uh, and the fact is, whether it's the FBI, the CIA, the, the DNI, what were their great accomplishments and achievements in leading the intelligence community? Was it to... Exactly. You know, it, it's the, the history of the intelligence community over the past 20 years is a, a sad and sorry tale. If, if I worked in the White House, I would convene a month-long symposium against human trafficking just to watch Morning Joe convene a panel in favor of it. <laughs> Which I think would be hilarious. <laughs> I will interest that idea. I think that's a lovely idea. Amen. <laughs> Great to see you. Great to see you, Tucker. Bob Thanks Sexton so much. is a former CIA analyst. He worked with the NYPD's Intel Division. He joins us tonight. So, you, I mean, you've worked in this world, Buck. You have a better sense of this. Does this apply across all government agencies? If I'm a rifleman in the Marine Corps, do I, get, do I get to keep my rifle at the end? Or if I work in artillery, do I get to keep my howitzer when I leave? Is this well, kind of the way it works? There's specific law with regard to clearances, and there's also customs, Tucker. And when you're talking about former agency heads, they tend to keep them in a way that run-of-the-mill employees like me don't. And they also have, as a courtesy, they'd say, the ability to go back in and still have uh, real-time access to classified information if, in fact, they were called in for that. That's the justification for this. But I feel like this whole debate just highlights a much bigger problem, a much more nefarious issue, and that is we have all these people lecturing us about institutions being undermined and look what's happened to us and the hacking of our democracy and this, this can't be allowed to happen. We have the former intel chiefs of the, the biggest agencies of the United States government, the most sophisticated intelligence apparatus on the planet, who are actively trying to undermine now the sitting president of the United States, and they weren't the intel chief 10 or 20 years ago. They were the most recent one. What that means is that every time you've got Clapper or Brennan or others who are going on air talking about, for example, the Russia collusion case, there is at least some perception. And by the way, I think some of them have tried to enhance this with what they've said. They've danced around this that they're drawing upon their classified knowledge to make some of these assumptions, right? They have extra gravitas. They should be paid attention to right. more because they're the most exactly. recent NSA or CIA director. That is insidious. I mean, this is deeply destructive to the faith that any future president could have in the previous administration's appointees at that level. And that's something I think does not get talked enough at all, talked about enough at all here. No, I think it's a very wise point. And remind us again the point of having all these various alphabet agencies, all the, the, the intel apparatus exists only to serve the executive and to help him or her make wise foreign policy decisions, correct? Is there some other reason to have a CIA? Well, I mean, there's a lot of agencies, you know, 17 now, I think, technically in the intel community, though someone's probably going to correct yeah. me on that one because it's actually grown since I was in it. So that will tell you something. It wasn't that yeah, long ago. Yeah, but they exist. They, they exist to give the, uh, for national security purposes, they would tell you what all the different specific missions are. Uh, but yes, they're executive branch agencies. And that then brings us to, they should be serving the executive branch. And the same way that liberals, Tucker, don't really accept that President Trump is the president and therefore could fire Comey for no reason or any reason. If he wants to revoke clearances under his Article II authority, he can do that. So I, I, you know, yeah. all of this freak out you're seeing from people is a form of Trump derangement syndrome on display for an issue that, by the way, most of these journalists have no idea what they're talking about. They've never held a clearance. They don't know what goes into this, and they don't know why anyone has one anyway. Also, they're dumb. I mean, if Trump's an authoritarian, he's a pretty inefficient one. I mean, if, if Brennan and Clapper still have clearances a year and a half in, you know, it's, it's, it's not much of a police state, I would say. Buck Sexton, great to see you. Good to see you, Tucker.